for our last 10-ish minutes here, we're going to talk about laminar versus turbulent flow. So throughout this class, we're going to be talking about flowing fluids are very important. And there's all different kinds of fluid flow. There's Newtonian and non-Newtonian, compressible and incompressible. But one very important distinction between types of flow we're going to be talking about this whole time is laminar versus turbulent flow. And so we're going to talk about what that means right now. Basic thing is that laminar flow is a fluid layers running parallel without mixing. So inside your fluid, the layers of it running in parallel. And turbulent flow means it's turbulent, so the fluid layers mix and swirl together. Now, most flows in your life are probably going to be turbulent. But most flows you see out in the world, turbulent. Laminar flows generally happen when you have some fluid that's very viscous, very thick, flowing very slowly. So you can make laminar flow happen. Times it would probably show up in normal life might be, let's say, a, a plant making food. It might have, say, honey, something like that. Honey would be more likely to flow laminarly than other things. Put stuff in the chat. By the way, I try to keep an eye on the chat, but I'm not great at it. So, yeah. So if you have questions, it's better to ask them out loud or do the little hand raisey thing, but I do try to keep an eye on the chat. Okay. Alrighty. So, laminar turbulent flow. Way to remember this. The word laminar comes from a word for layers, and that's why laminate flooring is called laminate flooring, is because laminate flooring has layers. I found this picture on the internet. It shows the layers of laminate flooring. Okay, so lamina is the Latin word for layers. That is why we have laminar flow when it's flowing in layers. Okay, so said, laminar flow tends to be viscous fluids flowing slowly, and turbulent flows tend to be less viscous fluids flowing fast. And this is gonna lead to the difference between these things. It's gonna lead to lots of differences in, for example, the amount of friction that the flow causes on the wall of a pipe, things like that. The amount of drag around an object, it comes up a lot. And we will talk more about that in time. Okay, so right here, we have some students in some undergraduate engineering class somewhere made this video to show us the transition from laminar to turbulent flow. They are talking now and I'm not interested in that because I'm talking. Okay, so they're put, they put some dye in the water there and now they're going to slow down flow until it turns laminar and you will see what happens. Okay, they're slowing, slowing, slowing. There we go. All right, so you can see they put the dye into two places. So when they slowed flow down enough, that was laminar, you can see that the dye doesn't get mixed up. It just stays and flows in a nice line. Also notice the edge of this water, or whatever liquid it is, I think it's water. Notice how smooth it looks. Okay, so now they speed it up again. Okay, they speed it up again, now it's turbulent. So now the dye is all mixed up, so the water's blue. And then also notice that the edges of it are kind of rough. That's all of those turbulent eddies inside of there. Any questions about laminar or turbulent flow so far? Okay. 
I have a question. Yes. And I don't know if this will get on. We'll get deeper into this later on in the semester. I'm, I'm sure we will. Mm -hmm. But are are there ways to like force laminar flow in situations where it wouldn't normally happen? So. Yes, is my short answer. My long answer yes, is. Uh, seen uh, PJ. Uh, someone say something. Christian, did you say something? Your box is highlighted. Oh, really? You live where you live at? <laughs> All right, then. Live in PJ. Yes. Okay. <laughs> mute him. Okay. Um. So, as I said. I wouldn't call it forcing because all you're really doing is making it be laminar in the natural way for it to be laminar, right? So um, you slow it down. Uh, it's also more likely to be laminar for the smaller the system is, and we'll talk about why that is later. So if you have a pipe, like a big wide pipe is more likely to be turbulent than a small one. In fact, if you go really small, like the flow around a, like a bacteria, that is generally super laminar flow. We call it creeping flow. So the smaller scale we're talking about, the more likely it is to be laminar. The slower it is, more likely it is to be laminar. And again, the more viscous the fluid is. So that is how you would try to create laminar flow if you wanted to do that. I wouldn't call it forcing though. That's just how it works. Okay. Um, part of the reason why I'm interested in this might be something that you'd be interested in looking into is um, uh -huh. there's this really cool uh, guy on YouTube who built a plasma-based lightsaber Ooh. by doing laminar flow um, with propane and then lighting it. And it's like <laughs> three feet long or something. Okay. That and is neat. And it might be a video I add to my lecture next year. Okay, cool. I'm going to look it up. Well, I just thought you might be interested in that because I'm interested in, because he doesn't explain super deeply why, and I'm figuring I'll probably learn more yeah, about that. Because I, like I want to see why, because I'm curious about what fluid he used. Anyway, <laughs> but we are going to finish off by watching one of my favorite videos on YouTube. Okay, so this is, they used a very, very viscous fluid here and they moved it very slowly to get very laminar or, or creeping flow. So they're putting in the dye and what they're doing is, you can't really tell, but they're doing some of the colors deeper than others on this dimension. So now it goes backwards. The thing is, if it's laminar enough, then flow becomes what's called flo fully reversible, which means it can just literally go backwards. Wow. I think that's neat. Okay, all right, 
So that's laminar and turbulent flow. That is our first. That is dope. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I do sometimes look at the chat. Okay, that's neat. Um, as I said, you don't have any homework due for Wednesday, but uh, you can still come to my office hours anyway. Look forward to seeing you then.